Where is everyone? <laughs> it's just Sterling. I'm gonna let him in, but wait. I I know since yesterday. I have ears in only and that's it. Really? Yes. How interesting. <laughs> everyone, everyone, all my classes keep this one. Yeah. Like, this petty had a meeting um, yesterday. I don't know. Roll, Easter, 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 Oh yeah. my God, Troy! Ow, he, 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 he's breaking people's property. Yes, he is. He is breaking my property. Wait, 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 wait. I did not hit you. Ow. He dropped on my stuff. Like, like, ow! Someone had to confuse yesterday because people tried to run his place last night. Ethan doesn't do the Bill and Zay's. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Mike, Mr. Oh, Mr. Smith also. I have to go. Here is just like Music classes apparently do not have to meet on Wednesdays. We are supposed to meet on Wednesdays unless we have something else going on, like a meeting or whatever. Um, Nate, will you close the door? Uh, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Nate. What? He's supposed to. We have our own rules. He's definitely supposed to. We are supposed to be having success <laughs> sessions on Wednesday. You can close the door. That's so weird. Like we just that's just kind of irritating because we went over so many times like how Wednesdays are supposed to go for academic classes. Because like we were like, hey, let's like not meet uh, or like let kids know if they need to come. But then they're like, no, you have because you have to take attendance. So oh, yeah, I don't know how that works because attendance you have to take it, but it's like I, just I don't know even know. I don't know. Sterling, why are you the only one in the class? That's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Ian's here. No Corey. Christian. Brendan. No Hayward. Troy. No Eli. Nate. Chip. Sterling. No Andarius. Did anyone else join? No? All right. Well, people will probably start joining when they see that I've marked them absent because then they get upset. Yeah, it's funny. You'll do that, but I literally never, never check my ever. You don't? <laughs> um, a couple people got on to me the other day. Like a couple of students said that I like gave them a heart attack. And I'm like, I don't, I don't really. Okay. Here comes Hayward. Um, no, a couple of students said that I gave them a heart attack because I went ahead and put in like all the other um, assignments that you'll have for the rest of the year. And, like I put dates on them and everything, but they they just all of a sudden saw like nine ungraded things and was like, "What did I miss?" So yeah, it was nice to kind of like know what's coming down the kind of line. Yeah. Oh, hmm. oh gosh. Okay. We're going to finish the play today. And that's what I want to do first. Uh, I don't have no idea. I don't know anything about it really. Like games, <laughs> but I don't know what kind of games or anything. I think, uh, I think Darling's kind of in charge of it. So yeah, I'm sure it will be. All right. Here comes Corey. Good, good, good. Corey. No one's doing anything. That whole that whole week is like a free week. That whole week is so shot because I mean, like it's the last week, so whatever. But like Monday, y'all can come to school Monday, but I would be surprised to see everyone, you know. Um, and the the day before graduation. <laughs> Rehearsal for graduation is the morning of graduation. Yeah, so yeah. Y'all gotta read my emails. I do part of it. Thank you. <laughs> part of it. <laughs> I have sent that's in several emails. Um, the one that had the PDF that was like all graduation and end of the year questions. That's on that. Uh, I think your parents got emailed separately about that. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna say, I'd be, I, 
I would be surprised if y'all came, if everyone came on the day before graduation Monday. Um, I mean, like, what, what do you mean have to, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, like, well, probably at that point, I didn't know. <laughs> But the one that's got like the PDF with all the questions, it's in there. Um, yeah, like just spoiler alert, we're not gonna be doing anything in here the day before graduation. Um, we'll just be like messing around. The morning of graduation, well, the you do not have to come to school the, the day of graduation. Um, your only obligation is to come to the music hall at 10 a.m. So. Uh, somebody take Ian. <laughs> well, are you gonna, do you not have to? Not to, the, to, the, to you, you need to. Okay. So, I'm I, it's so difficult to say you have to just because like you do have to get yourself there, but like you'll be kind of lost if you don't if you don't come to the rehearsal. Does somebody live close to you? Are they senior? But Dom would come get you. Just because he's good about that kind of thing. Yeah, where do you live again? Like what, like West Ashley, James Allen, Johns Island, North Charleston, West Ashley. I'm trying to remember because I know I've been to your I've been to your house. I gave you your yearbook, but I went to so many houses that I don't remember. I do remember that I went to the wrong house first. But <laughs> um, OK, so we're going to finish this play. And that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, we only have like 10 pages left, not even 10 pages. So we'll get through it pretty quickly. And then we'll do a Kahoot because we have our vocab quiz tomorrow. Um, but I want to go ahead and just plow through the end of this. Um, so where we left off yesterday, let me make this a little bit bigger and then I'll, I'll share my screen with y'all in just a sec. Um, everybody knows the truth now. Um, Jack and Ernest or Jack and Algernon, like who, who are we ever talking about? Um, both want to get their names changed and want Dr. Chasuble to come christen them. Um, but Lady Bracknell has shown up. Um, you missed reading some very good lines. Um, she was like, I'm not going to allow my daughter, Gwendolyn, to marry Algernon. No, sorry. <laughs> All the names. Not going to allow her to marry Jack because we don't know anything about him. He was found in a handbag at a train station. And we don't, you know, who, who are his parents? What is his status? Like, we don't... She did. She said something along those lines. Yes, I will not let my daughter marry luggage. Um, something like I, I don't want a parcel to be part of the family or something like that. Um, but she is totally on board for her nephew Algernon marrying young Cecily, just because she's nice and pretty and looks like she would be a good wife. And also because since Algernon does not have a ton of money, thanks to his uh, He's, he's in debt and he spends very lavishly, but she's like, that's fine because now I know that Cecily's not a gold digger, so they can get married. However, Jack is her legal guardian. And so he's like, sorry, I'm not going to allow her to marry Algernon because we are gonna be on page 80. Um, I'm not gonna allow that marriage to happen um, she doesn't actually come of age until she's 35 legally <laughs> and she can't get married without my permission. So no. Uh, and he's using it kind of as a bargaining chip. Um, and I'm sure in the next few lines, we'll see that, that like, he's basically like, well, if you let me marry Gwendolyn, I'll let Algernon marry Cecily. We can all live happily ever after. Um, so I think where we left off was literally right here after, um, after Jack said that Cecily doesn't legally come of age until she's 35. Um, let me share my screen with you virtual folks. Probably all of the characters will be in this in these last few pages, if I had to guess. Maybe not Lane, maybe not Merriman, but 
uh, pretty much everybody else. So we're going to start with Lady Bracknell here. Brendan. Yeah, he was your understudy. <laughs> that does not seem to me to be a grave objection. 35 is a very attractive age. London society is full of women of the very highest birth who, who have of their own free choice. Remain 35 for years. Lady Dumbleton is an instance in point. To my knowledge, she has been 35 ever since she has arrived at the age of 40, which, of, which is many years ago now. I see no reason why our dear Cecilia should not have been more attractive at the age you mentioned than she is at present. There will be a large accumulation of property. Algie, could you wait for me till I was 35? Of course I could. No, I couldn't. Yes, I felt it instinctively, but I couldn't wait all that time. I hate waiting even five minutes for anybody. It always makes me rather cross. I'm not punctual myself, I know, but I do like punctuality in others, and waiting even to be married is quite out of the question. And what is to be done, sir? I don't know, Mr. Moncrief. My dear Mr. Worthing, as Miss Cardew states positively that she cannot wait till she is 35, a remark which I am bound to say seems to me to show somewhat <laughs> impotent nature. I would beg of you to reconsider your decision. But my dear Lady Bracknell, the matter is entirely in your own hands. The moment you consent to my marriage with Gwendolyn, I will most gladly allow your nephew to form an alliance with my ward. He knows what he's doing. You must be quite aware that what you propose is out of the question. Then a passionate celibacy. celibacy is all that any of us can look forward to. That is not the destiny I propose for Gwendolyn. Algernon, of course, can choose for himself. Come, dear, we have already missed five, if not six trains. To miss any more might expose us to comment on the platform. So he is not giving in. He's like, if you will let me marry Gwendolyn, then everybody can get married and that's fine. If you don't, guess we're all going to be single for a really long time. <laughs> Enter Dr. Chassible. That's Christian. Everything is quite ready for you, Christening. The christenings, sir, is not that. Wait, is not that somewhat okay? I didn't. Yeah. That. No, you didn't. <laughs> it's just a weird syntax. At their age, the idea is. Grotesque. 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 And irreligious. Algernon, I forbid you to be baptized. I will not hear of such except. Lord Bracknell would be highly displeased if he learned that that. that. If he learned that that was the way. <laughs> if he learned that that was the way in which you wasted your time. I am to understand. Then that there are to be no christening at all this afternoon. That, that. <laughs> I don't think that as things are now, it would be much, it would be of much practical value to either of us, Dr. Chasuble. I agree to hear her hear such sen sentiments from you, Miss Worthy, Mr. Worthy. They say savor of the Critical, critical views of the anti Baptist views that I have completely refuted in four our four of my unpublished sermons. However, as you present, mood, present, present. Mood seems to be one particularly singular, I will return to the church at once. Indeed, I have just been informed by the new Q opener. Q opener that for the last hour and a half, Miss Prism has been waiting for me in the vestry. Oh yeah, I remember they had like a little thing going on. 
He was flirting with her a lot. Miss uh, Prism, did I hear you mention this story? Yes, Lady Brack Bracknell. Bracknell, I am on my way to join her. Pray, allow me to detain you for a moment. This matter may prove to be a of vital importance to Lord Bracknell and myself. Is this Miss Prism a female of repellent? Expert. Mm -hmm. wow. Meaning she's ugly. <laughs> oh, remotely <laughs> Sorry. <connected laughs> right she is the most civil, civil cultivated. Most cultivated of ladies and the very picture of this respectability. Mm -hmm. Respectability. It is obviously the same person. May I ask what position she holds in your household? I am celibate. No. And just in case y'all don't know, celibate means you don't have sex, and priests usually don't, or like priests of certain um, denominations don't. They like make a vow of chastity. So she, he, he's like, I don't have. Yeah, I mean that's a thing. Um, he's like, I. She's not in my household because I don't have a household. I'm a priest. I'm celibate. Miss Prison. Okay, okay. Miss Prism, <laughs> Lady Bracknell has been for the last three years Miss Cardi's esteemed governess and valued companion. In spite of what I hear of her, I must see her at once. Let her be sent for. She approaches. She is in nigh. She is nigh. She's she's showing up. All right, Chip is Miss Prism. I was told you expectantly in the vestry, Lady Bracknell. I have been waiting for you there for an hour. Reporters. This is why sometimes stage directions are really important because the, there's there's something going on here. She sees Lady Bracknell, who has given her the stank eye, and she is afraid. It says she grows pale and quails, which is one of our vocabulary words, and wants to leave. Oh, Until now, they have like they have not had any kind of interaction. So it's like, what's the deal between these two people? <laughs> It is crazy. Prison. Come here, prison. Prison. Where's that baby? Baby. General consternation. Uh, <laughs> Chassis Bull starts back in horror. Algernon and Jack pretend to be anxious to shield Cecily and Gwendolyn from hearing the details of a terrible public scandal. Let's hear what the scandal is. Uh, yes. <clears throat> 28 years ago, present, you left Lord Bracknell's house, number 104, Upper Grosvenor. I think it is Grosvenor. Grosvenor. Yeah, Grosvenor Street. In, uh, in charge of <laughs> a perambulator, which is a fancy word for a stroller. <laughs> in charge of a stroller that contained a <laughs> of the male sex. You never returned. A few weeks later, through the elaborate investigation of the Metro, Metropolitan. Metropolitan Police. And the stroller, I mean, the stroller was discovered at midnight, standing by itself in a remote corner of Bayes Water. It contained the manuscript of three volume novels of more than usual, usually revolving sentiment. Sentimentality. But the baby was not in there. I don't know where is that baby? Any guesses about this? Who the baby is? Where this baby went? 28 years ago, she, Miss Prism. It's the, it's the luggage yeah. boy. There you go, the luggage boy. <laughs> and it sounds like, you know, she had him, which like, it's saying that Prism left Lord Bracknell's house, who is Lady Bracknell's husband, with this baby, and the stroller was found with a novel in it, weirdly enough, and the baby was gone. So what in the world? Lady Bracknell, I admit with shame that I do not know. I what? only wish I did. I know, I know. The latest fact of the day so on the morning of the day you mentioned, a day that is forever burned in on memory. I prepared as usual for the baby out in its perambulator. I have also with me somewhat old. Capacious, vocabulary word. 
and which I have intended to place a manuscript of a work of fiction that I have written for the Ormani Factory. In a moment of mental abstraction, for which I could never forgive myself, I deposited the book and manuscript in the basement and placed the baby in it. I, I kind of like though that she is like writing romance novels basically and she just she's like oh i i had this i had this romance novel i'd written and accidentally put that in the stroller instead of the baby what <laughs> but where did you deposit the handbag Miss Prism, this is a matter of no small importance to me. I insist on knowing where you deposit the handbag that contained the infant. Be quiet. <laughs> what railway station and what? I must retire to my room for a moment. Gwendolyn, wait for me here. Wait here for me, man. Gwendolyn, Corey. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you are not too long, I will wait here for my all my life. Well, they, I, I feel like both these women kind of got over their anger really quick. Like right. they were like, you lied to us about what your name is. We don't even know you. And then now she's like, Gwendolyn's like, I'll wait my whole life for you. And Cecily's like, I want to marry you right now. I don't want to wait until I'm 35. Like, where's your righteous indignation? Have some respect, ladies. What do you think this means for Mm-hmm. I dare not even suspect, Dr. Castle. I need hardly tell you that in families of population, strange coincidences are not supposed to occur. They are hardly considered a thing. Noises overhead. Everybody looks up. Uncle Jack seems strangely agitated. Your body has a very emotional nature. Oh, this noise is extremely unpleasant. It sounds as if he was having an argument. I dislike arguments of any kind. They are always vulgar and often. Ah. It has stopped now. More noise. Okay. <laughs> I wish you would arrive at some conclusion. When we just. Oh. <laughs> no, I. It's fine, Corey. Read your line. <laughs> This thing, my, my Zoom is acting really weird. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. I, this The suspense is terrible. I hope it will last. I just wanted to point out, is anybody super familiar with the old movie of uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? He says that in it when he's... We watched it in my class? Surely not. Why? Just for kicks and giggles? <laughs> I'm trying to imagine like what the what point of watching that would have been, but he, I think it's when, when does he say that? The old one, maybe it's when Mike TV is like going through Wonka vision and they're like waiting to see if he'll pop up on the TV and Willy Wonka says the suspense is terrible. I hope it'll last. And I, I don't, I've read this before and somehow it just never struck me that like that's where he got it fun i do too oh my gosh have you seen you haven't seen young frankenstein right so we talked he about that yes when is it what's happening it's in the when movie the kid is going up the tube. when the kid is going up the tube augustus gloop <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's it's crazy. We should watch that sometime. I mean, we don't really have any time left to watch it, but there's there's a part in the middle that like scarred so many children. <laughs> yes, Chip. An Oscar Wilde by Wilder. Oh, an Oscar Wilde by Wilder. All right, Jack comes in with the handbag. Is this the handbag, Miss Prison? Examine it carefully before you speak. The happiness of more than one life depends on your answer. 
Miss Prism, more is restored to you than this handbag. I was the baby you placed in it. Yes, mother. <laughs> Ew, I'm staring at mommy. Wait, 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 wait. You're, hang on. Mr. Where's the guy that's unmarried? Unmarried? I do not deny that is a serious blow. But after all, who was the right to cast a stone against one who has suffered? Cannot repentance wipe out an act of folly? Why should there be any one? Why should there be one law for men and another for women? Mother, I forgive you. It's a pretty progressive line, honestly. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, it's not great that you're unmarried, that you had a baby out of wedlock, but like people make mistakes. It's not the end of the world. Uh, you know, men can sleep around and I don't know why women shouldn't be able to. So it's fine. I forgive you. Lady Bracknell, I hate to seem inquisitive, but would you kindly inform me who I am? I'm afraid that the guilt I have to give you will not all further uh, you're the son of my poor sister, and consequently, Algernon's elder brother. Crazy! Algernon's elder brother! Oh, geez, elder brother? Then I have a brother after all. I wow. knew I had a brother. I, I always said I had a brother. Cecily, how could you have ever doubted that I had a brother? <laughs> Dr. <me>. Tassable. <laughs> <laughs> my unfortunate brother, Miss Prism, my unfortunate brother, Gwendolyn, my unfortunate brother, Algy, you young scoundrel, you will have to treat me with more respect in the future. You have never behaved to me like a brother in all your life. Shakes hands. My own, but what are, what own are you? What is your Christian name now that you have become someone else? Good heavens. I had quite, I had quite forgotten that point. Your decision on the subject of my name is irrevocable, I suppose. I never change except in my affections. What a noble nature you have, Gwendolyn. Then the question had better be cleared up at once. Aunt Augusta, a moment at the time, at the time when Miss Car Cameron, really? You just want to yell right there? Uh, at the time when Miss Prism left me in the handbag, had I been choked, christened already? Then I was christened. That is settled. Now, what name was I given? Let me know the worst. Being an oldest son, you were naturally christened after your father. Yes, but what was my father's Christian name? Christian name. But I have no doubt you had it. He was. Eccentric. Eccentric. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -hm
I can't believe oh. she can't remember her. Sorry, I can't believe she can't remember her own brother-in-law's name. I mean, families were weird back then. Like, not everybody knows each other, but still, it's your sister's husband. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Algy, can you can you recollect what your what our father's Christian name was? His name would appear in the army lists of the period, I suppose, Aunt Augusta. The army lists of the last 40 years are here. These delightful records, oh man, should have been my constant study. Good luck. <laughs> M. Generals, Mal Malum, Max, Baum, Magley. What ghastly names they have. Mark, Mark B., Migsby, Mobs, Moncrief. Lieutenant, 1840. Captain, Lieutenant, Colonel. Colonel, General, 19, 1869. Christian names. Ernest, John. I always told him my name was Ernest, didn't I? Well, it is. Well, it is Ernest. After all, I mean, it naturally is Ernest. Yes, I remember that. The gentleman was called Ernest. Now I remember that. I remember that. Of course it is. It was called Ernest. I knew I had some particular reason for just liking the name. Ernest, my own Ernest. I felt, I felt from the first that you could have had no other name. Mm -hmm. Sure. Gwendolyn, it is a terrible thing for a man to find out suddenly that all his life he has been speaking nothing but the truth. Can you forgive me? I can, for I feel that you are sure to change. <laughs> You'll lie to me in the future, thank God. My own one. Letitia. Letitia. Reverend at last. <laughs> Gwendolyn, at last. My nephew, you seem to be displaying signs of Twitter. Twitter, okay. Reality. On the contrary, Aunt Augusta, I've now realized for the first time in my life the vital importance of being earnest. Hey, that's the name of the play. <laughs> <laughs> This is really interesting. So there's there's a movie. So that's the end? That's it? That's how it ends? That's it, yeah. Yes. That's what it is. That is the <laughs> <laughs> I think Corey's disagreeing with you. <laughs> it's just silly. It's just silly. Like oh, what so is like happen like what? There's no oh, my name Ernest now. That's it. <laughs> so this is really interesting. There's a like, um, happily ever after. Yeah, they live happily ever after. Yeah. There's a movie of it, and I might show you some clips of it tomorrow um, from probably the early 2000s, maybe like 2002, 2003. And um, at the end, and I think this would be hard to do in a play, and it's interesting that the movie chose to do it this way, but he takes down the book and looks and he finds the name and he tells everybody, my father's name was Ernest John. See, I have been Ernest this whole time. And then the camera zooms in on the book and it's, it shows that his name was Jack. Uh, but he tells everybody that it's Ernest. And so oh, he's wow. like, I finally recognize the importance of being Ernest. I kind of like that in there. Cause like, he's not actually Ernest at all. Like he, he lucked out with this one. Like the fact that his name is That's actually it. Ernest. <laughs> Um, I found an Oscar Wilde quote that I think is one of my favorite quotes ever. What is it? I can resist anything except temptation. temptation. <laughs> Oscar Wilde is full of good quotes. Okay, so we're going to talk more about this tomorrow and kind of like recap some stuff, but we need to do a Kahoot for our uh, for our test. Oh yeah, well we can't watch movie clips tomorrow because you'll have your quiz. Right, we can watch it after your quiz, yeah. If everybody gets done. 
Um, come on. Why do I have to have 17 tabs open for Kahoot? Kahoot it. I like that you can control the volume in the window. Troy, what? go sign in. I do. I do. Sign in. Pardon me. You ruined all my stuff earlier. <laughs> Let alone your your threat from eighth grade. Oh yeah, I bully him so bad. I'll let you live another year. Is what, that's what you said to me in eighth grade. You were here. So probably don't were here the other day. I brought in all my old yearbooks to look through. This was the first one. Where is it? Um, well, no, there was there's one before the year that I wasn't here. This is from when y'all were in eighth grade. And look at that, Troy. You may insult me every single day, but I'll let you live for another year. Oh, no, 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 what? I did not. I've never hit him in my life. If anything, you probably hit me. You you used to have even a worse sense of like your own space and you just like run into people <laughs> like run into desks all the time <laughs> like, oh. start if you're not in make sure you're paying wait, wait 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 okay because <laughs> there are this one this is a hard list of words in my opinion i want to speak french all right that's nearly everybody anyway all right all right all right shameless boldness impertinence is it effrontery audacity capaciousness or gall it's got to be our, one of our words Ooh, only two people got it right effrontery Audacity is a good is a good choice, but it's not the right choice. Who's right? Ford Ranger and Ian. Confident, stylish, and charming. Mercenary, dandy, quixotic, or debonair. Oh, y'all had some interesting answers about dandies. Wait, what? This? Oh, I thought you were just like doing a weird dance or something. Like, all right, do your do your thing, man. <laughs> debonair. A, a dandy would probably be debonair or act debonair, but it's not. It's not a word. To feel irritation, discontent, or impatience. Vex, chafe, quail, or affront. <laughs> you like a it's like almost napoleon dynamite but like not quite chafe all right pretty good pretty good only four of you um did it but it's all right make sure you're paying attention somebody got it right impossible to overcome 
quixotic, supercilious, insurmountable, or insuperable? <laughs> you probably did. Insuperable. I make them tricky, tricky for you. To recoil in dread or terror, to shriek with fear. We actually just read this one in the play. Quail, pheasant, cower, or vacillate. Yeah. So there used to be a fun Halloween one, but I don't think they did it. Quail, that's right. Uh, Miss Prism quailed when she saw Lady Bracknell. To alternate or waver between different opinions or actions, to be indecisive. Affront, waffle, chafe, or vacillate. Um, we might have time for me to tell you talk about it more. Uh, primarily concerned with making money at the expense of ethics. Mercenary, gold digger, quixotic, or debonair? Gold digger. <laughs> oh, that might give us a good hint for, to remember for the sentences on the quiz. And <laughs> indeed. Oh, she's a gold digger. May have a chance. Exceedingly idealistic, unrealistic, and impractical. Romantic, effrontorous, super, supercilious, or quixotic. I'll give you a hint. One of those is not a word. <laughs> quixotic. It means exceedingly idealistic, unrealistic, and impractical. <laughs> this is a poopy. Behaving or looking as though one thinks they are superior to others. Capacious, haughty, debonair, or supercilious. There's your, your hint on that one. Supercilious has got the word super. As people who think they are superior both have the word super in them. And lastly, having a lot of space inside. Roomy. Is it mercenary, capacious, extensive, or insuperable? <laughs> Is it extensive? <laughs> Everybody got that one right. Nice. All right. Let's look at our podium in third place. Yo, it's darling backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Ian and who is Ford Ranger? Ford Ranger. Um, is it Sterling? Is yeah, it was me. Hmm. What's what? Oh my gosh. Okay, our toughest ones were quixotic, effrontery, and supercilious. Um, we can play again. Yeah, we have we have time to play again. I've also gone ahead and done this on. Um, I I posted the link so y'all can do it on your own. But we'll play when you hit play again. It's all your ghosts too. But we're gonna do it that way anyway. And everybody's still in that was in before. So we're doing it. We're doing it. On the, on the last, on the, like the last two, last two weeks of school. Yes. I'm be, I'm be, I'm be so, I'm be so nice to you. I don't believe you. <laughs> to alternate between different opinions, to be indecisive. Oh, look at 
that. Hi, buddy. Ghosts and all. Yo, it's darling. Having a lot of space inside, roomy. We literally just did this one. Yes, this is the ghost music. Oh, it's already 9.54? Wow. I gotta, um, okay, we just gotta go quickly. All right, all right, everybody's getting it right. I don't know what this is about. All right, not bad, not bad, not great, but not bad. To feel irritation, discontent, or impatience. They front, coil, vex, or chafe. Chafe, yeah. Um, okay, that button did a weird thing. Mm, impossible to overcome. We might not quite finish this for the second time, but. Okay, okay. Border Rangers ghost slipping into first. Shameless boldness. Impertinence. Remind you of anyone? Oh God, the bell's gonna ring. Better, better. Exceedingly idealistic, unrealistic, and impractical. This was one of our worst ones before. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, we gotta go. Yeah, I'll let this one run out. We're just gonna see, we're gonna let this one go. Ooh, still not great. Still not great on that one. Okay, we, ha we have to go because I have to go watch Miss Smith's class, uh, but I will see y'all tomorrow. The Kahoot is on Canvas, so study on your own.